Hello everybody, welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation channel. I'm your host, Joseph, and today we're going to be talking about the massive Jim Ryan interview that hints at PlayStation VR 2, PlayStation games coming to PC, and what the future of PlayStation Plus holds for members. So with all that said, and with all that out of the way, Future Joe, let's start the show. So Jim Ryan had a GQ interview about kind of the roadmap, it seems, of PlayStation, where they see the company going in 2021 and beyond when it comes to things like PSVR, PlayStation games going to PC and the like. It's a pretty awesome interview. Link down to it in the description. That's where I'm getting all these quotes from. And there's also a PlayStation blog post link down below that will be talking about the PlayStation VR 2. So with that... Um, they kind of talk about in the beginning of this interview what they saw in PlayStation VR. Why still support it, I believe the interviewer said. And this is what you know Jim Ryan had to say. We believe in VR and have been extremely happy with the results of the present PlayStation VR and think we will do good business with our new VR system for PlayStation 5. More importantly, we see it as something beyond this coming iteration that really could be really big and really important. We like to innovate. We think our community likes us to innovate. I'd turn around the question and say, why not? For us, it's a very logical step to make. We are very excited by it, and we think people are going to make VR games for our new VR system are going to be very excited too. He also hints that there are dev kits that are going to be coming out soon for developers to start utilizing. So it goes to show that PSVR 2 is in development, and it's really long in its development. So it's really awesome to see. I think, I think earlier this year, or around this time, developers got their hands on you know playstation 5 dev, dev kits so it goes to show that this thing probably won't be coming out in you know 2021 i think they still want their production to be focused on playstation 5 because they can't make enough of them so i do think this is more of a 2022 thing but the more interesting thing that jim ryan had to say is that you know, the, the the few clues is that, A, this is going to be a single cable setup, which gives me the feeling it's going to be like an Oculus Rift S. This is just me throwing the hype out there. I think it's the Rift S where it's, you know, you could plug it into the PlayStation 5, you get the resolution boost, you get, you know, the game boost and whatever have you. And it makes it, A, simple to for people to connect, because I know the one thing with my VR and everybody, the biggest complaint, there's too many goddamn cords. Everything's just everywhere. It's so hard to set up, and by the time you put it on, you kind of just want to take a nap. <laughs> this here, making a one-cord setup, makes that so much easier. There's no more HDMI cords, none of that, it seems. This is going to be a single setup. And what I'm really thinking is that's why they have that USB-C in front of the PlayStation five i think that's what's going to be i think it's a usb-c to usb-c connection which is going to make it possible to have all that in a single cord that being said i would love to have it so that i don't have to have the cord and i can you know play games on the headset itself but only time will tell i would pay honestly god i would play pay a pretty penny to have it so that I could play in my living room and not in my room to, to experience VR. But this is really exciting for PSVR gamers because it also shows that they're not giving up on the technology. So honestly, all this is really good news so far. If you're a PSVR owner, PlayStation ain't giving up on you. And they really see this as something they want to be at the forefront on. They don't want to be left out like they were with, you know, phones and MP3 players. So honestly, this is... This is awesome to see Sony still believe in this thing. That said, though, oh, man, you know, when they announced Horizon Zero Dawn on PC, there was some toxic folks in the PlayStation community that were like, this is the worst. This is awful. Blah, blah, blah. Jim Ryan had this to explain on Horizon Zero Dawn coming to PC in August last year and how it went for PlayStation. He said, we assessed the exercise in two ways. Firstly, in terms of straightforward success of the activity publishing the game on PC, people liked it and they bought it. We also looked at it through
through the lens of what PlayStation community thought about it. There was no mass adverse reaction to it, if you were on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we will continue to take steps in that direction. So it really goes to show, the power of Twitter is that people will bitch, moan, complain about pretty much anything, but at the end of the day, their voices don't matter that much because it looks like Horizon Zero Dawn was a success enough of it to make it so that, yeah, we're going to go and start publishing our games on PC as well. And now there is another quote that Jim Ryan does say that I really do want to pull up because it is worth noting about how game development has grown and the prices of such. And he says the following, I think a few things changed. We find ourselves now in early 2021 with our development studios and games that they make in better shape than they ever been before. Particularly from the latter half of the PlayStation 4 cycle, our studios made some wonderful, great games. There's an opportunity to expose those great games to a wider audience and recognize the economics of game development that are not always straightforward. The cost of making games goes up with each cycle as the caliber of IP has improved. Also, our ease of making it available to non-console owners has grown, so it's a fairly straightforward decision for us to make. Here's the thing. The key here is, you know, game development is not as straightforward as a lot of people think. I really like that phrase because the one rumbling that I keep hearing is, you know, AAA games, there's going to be an implosion. There is just way too much money that goes into these games. There's way too many risks to make AAA games. And that's why you really see AAA games really do play it safe. That's why whenever, like, Ubisoft makes a game that is very political they're like no 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 no. far cry 5 Psh, not political one bit you get me man because they don't want to alienate anybody they're scared to because again it's all about the profits to these companies that's why you're seeing so many more games and services that's why you're seeing more single player games have those microtransactions that help you level up faster we're gonna use assassin's creed you know there's so many things that are now in place to make it so that games have longer tails that's why cross play cross platform play um backwards compatibility is bigger than it's ever been because these games need to last years not months they need to sell year in year out that's why a great example would be like you know a rocket league or a rainbow six or warzone or fortnite right these games that last forever it seems supported forever because of their communities that's that's what we're seeing big triple a games kind of lean towards because it's getting more and more expensive so yeah if this means look I'm not going to see a microtransaction in a PlayStation first party game for another couple, you know, years. Awesome. This is a great step for me as a PlayStation fan. I don't even care if you put this on an Xbox. You know what I mean? I'm just here to experience great games. The box is coming secondary. So this is kind of PlayStation going, okay, listen, we, we get it. You like our blockbusters. We're going to keep doing that. I'm totally fine with that. You know, if PC players are not going to buy a PlayStation to begin with, what's the harm of letting a Days Gone, which is their next PC game they're going to be putting out, um, or Horizon Zero Dawn or Last of Us or God of War, what's the problem in making those games on PC? It doesn't seem like there's really any. So that said, that quote I think speaks volumes as to what people actually really want from these companies and what they're expecting down the line. So lastly, um, they talk about Gran Turismo uh, and their 2021 games. And they state that Ratchet and Clank and Horizon are their focus. So it looks like God of War has been delayed and Gran Turismo has been officially delayed till 2022. So it's cool that we're getting Horizon. I'm definitely thinking that is going to be a late summer, early fall game. Uh, the thing that's going to get you to buy a PlayStation 5 in the holiday season. And uh, I'm excited to see you, man. And yeah, I I think when we all understood, we saw that God of War trailer and ain't coming out 2021. So I ain't disappointed in the slightest. Oh, also, the last, last thing, talk about PlayStation Plus subscribers and the Play at Home initiative that they started last year during the pandemic. There's some cool things that they stated. First, PlayStation Plus subscribers. 87% of people that bought a PlayStation 5 are subscribed to PlayStation Plus, which 
I get it. If you're an early adopter, you're usually hyped for PlayStation. You probably own a lot of those services, probably not PlayStation now yet, but nonetheless, 87% is what they expected. And when it comes to how they've incentivized people with like games like Bug Snacks, uh, Man Eater, um, you know, Destruction All Stars for PlayStation 5 users, this is what Jim Ryan had to say. Yes. It is. We see this as a very in interesting, innovative way to publish games and make games available to our subscribers. It works for us as the publisher, and we know that subscribers to PlayStation Plus love it. I absolutely do. The variety there has been really, it's it's been there. It's really impressive to see. And honestly, PlayStation Plus gives me hope that if they can nail PlayStation now, and make the improvement that they need that Jim Ryan has teased, yet not in this interview, but earlier, um, th this could be a contender. I don't think it's going to be Game Pass level great, but they could still make it really good because PlayStation Pl Plus is just a phenomenal platform. So with all that said, with all that out of the way, uh, last but not least, and I mean this for reals now, um, for the Play at Home initiative, they're going to start with Ratchet and Clank and some Funimation stuff, but it seems like they're going to be trickling some other stuff at, for the Play at Home initiative as well. So it's going to be cool to see some cross, you know, marketing between this Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and this Play at Home initiative and how well they gel together. So it's awesome. More free games are good games to me. So with all that said, with all that out of the way, I want to know what y'all think about PSVR 2. I want to know what y'all think of PlayStation games coming to PC and yeah, PlayStation Plus and all the games that are getting delayed out of 2021. What are you excited to see this year? Let me know in the comment section down below. And with all that said, with all that out of the way, everybody, keep your wits about you, keep hunting, and make sure you're subscribed, liked, and shared, and keep playing PlayStation.